When I was a kid, one of the things that I remember most about my family is driving around in our light baby blue sparkly station wagon. That car went through so much in so many years, but one of the memories that comes back to me often is that of seeing my mother sitting in the car when we got home from Mass on Sundays. In this episode, I am going to talk about why that moment sticks in my head so significantly as an adult myself, how we can approach the holidays from a place of love, and how you can actually time and space to process on your own, and why that is so significantly important. Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome to the Persistence in Prayer podcast hosted by Catholic Mindset Coach, wife, mother, educator, and speaker, Kylie Hine. Kylie is passionate about helping you deepen your relationship with God through the power of prayer. This podcast is a space for high achievers who want to do it all, but also want to prioritize their spiritual life and grow in faith. Join us as we explore the beauty of persistence in prayer and the transformative impact it can have on our lives. Get ready to discover practical tips, insights, and inspiration to help you develop a daily prayer practice and cultivate a deeper sense of trust in God's plan for your life. Let's journey together towards a more fulfilled and faithful life as we invite the Holy Spirit in. Let's begin. My family history is a little complicated, but for most of my life, there were four children living at home. And that meant my mom was taking all four of us to Mass by herself. My dad would only go to Mass on Mother's Day, and the rest of the year, it was my mom. And as a mother now, I understand how incredibly difficult that is to get your children to Mass on your own, especially when they are young. And our Mass started at 11 a.m., so it would get over around noon. We'd get home about 12.15. And so you can imagine that all of us kids were then hungry and we would all get out of the car and we would go inside. But the thing I remember is my mom sitting in the car. She would sit in the car by herself when we got home from mass. Now, why did she do that? Well, as I reflect back on this now from my new perspective as a mother and with my better understanding of temperaments, it is really clear to see that like many of us, my mother needed time and space to process her emotions. Unfortunately for my mother, because all of us were hungry, she never had very long to sit in the car by herself, because if she sat out there too long, all of us kids were going to be crawling back in the car with her, questioning her, interrogating her as to why she was not coming inside, because we couldn't possibly understand that she needed this time and space to just process her emotions and maybe to just sit and reflect on mass and spend time with the Lord. In a world that is so busy, it can be incredibly difficult to find time and space to process our emotions, whether it's in our own families where there's constant interaction, there's noise, that our jobs, or just in the day-to-day it's sometimes really hard to get away. Even in our own homes, we are tempted by the noise of our televisions, of our phones, of the radio. And it gets simpler and simpler to make those temptations become a reality. We don't even have to walk to turn on the TV. We can click a button on the remote. And if the remote's lost, we can simply use our phone, which we know is going to be attached to our hip because we'd feel lost if it wasn't right there next to us. But we know that this time and space is really important. And I have found the significance of that so much more since I have started Catholic coaching, where I am able to hold the space for others and see the incredible transformations that come from them. But there's another place where we are truly transformed as well, and that is in our prayer life and in our prayer time. I think of a couple of things come to mind, actually when I think of prayer that I want to share with you today, especially as we are going into the holidays where often we're surrounded by so much busy. This has come up in my group coaching calls and I feel like it's just something that's important to share. 
whether you are having family over for the holidays where your space is going to be encroached on, maybe you are excited about that or maybe that gives you a little bit of anxiety because we know that's a lot of different temperaments in one location. Or maybe you're traveling and you are going to be in someone else's space and you feel like you don't have anywhere for yourself where you can kind of get away. And that can be difficult. Not only are you navigating the relationships with everyone around you, but you don't always have time to resettle and recenter. And that can be a problem for many of us because we're not quite sure how to handle it. So today I'm going to talk about some ways that you can take your prayer with you so that you can be a little more centered on God. And we know that when we are centered on God, we are more charitable, we are more loving. These are ways that you can find space for yourself to process. And this time and space may be actually alone and away from people. But we also know that we can really just tap into our soul where we're at and go into that interior life. And we can find solitude in the midst of the chaos as well through prayer. So that's what I'm going to talk about today, ways that we can actually find alone time during the holidays, but also ways that we can tap into that interior life while we are surrounded by a group of people. One of the necessities for progress in the devout life, according to St. Francis de Sales, is that if you desire to heartily follow a devout life, seek a holy guide and conductor. And one of those greatest guides that we can follow. Of course, there's Jesus. There's a lot of saints, but I'm going to reference St. Paul today because y'all know I love prayer. And so here are a few inspirational pieces from St. Paul to remind you of why this is important, first of all, and then we'll get into the good stuff of how you can actually implement it. So in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, St. Paul says, with all prayer and supplication, pray at every opportunity in the spirit To that end, be watchful with all perseverance and supplication for all the holy ones. So praying at every opportunity as you are going into your family get together. And I'm speaking in the U.S. because we have Thanksgiving this week in just two days. But you can also apply this as you go into the Christmas holiday, as you have those get togethers coming up if you are in other parts of the world. Then, of course, we have Romans 12.12, also St. Paul, rejoice in hope, endure in affliction, and persevere in prayer. Colossians chapter 4, verse 2, persevere in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. And the last one, Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing in all circumstances give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Okay, so how does this show up in Thanksgiving or in our Christmas holiday? Well, number one, we can pray for our people. What a beautiful opportunity. When we feel ourselves getting overwhelmed, we feel like we really want to step out, we want to get away. This is a time that I have found in my life is really great for me to just tap into that interior life. If I don't like where the conversation is going, if it is getting gossipy, if it just feels like everyone is traveling in the opposite direction and I'm going against the crowd because sometimes I feel like that. I have an extroverted uh, temperament, but I very much am an introvert in terms of large groups of people. I get overwhelmed very quickly and I want to go just hide in my room and hide away. So I have found that it is very helpful for me to just pray for the people that I am surrounded by. Sometimes that's saying a silent decade of the rosary in my head. Sometimes it's saying, come Holy Spirit, give me the words to speak. It doesn't mean that I have to be overly confrontational, but just offering up prayers of thanksgiving and gratitude for the people I am surrounded by and what I can learn from them. This is also an opportunity for you to be a witness. I talked about this on the podcast last week about how when we don't even realize that people are watching us. So what a great opportunity, especially if you have family who maybe they're fallen away Catholics, maybe they've never been Catholic. 
but for you to be able to show them that you pray before your meal. And maybe your whole family does a big prayer of Thanksgiving together. That's beautiful. But I know, at least at my in-laws, no one else is Catholic, and that's not something that they typically do. And so I've gotten more comfortable over the years of, you know, pulling my children aside and we still say a quick prayer before meals. And my children are getting more comfortable where they are able to do that around their cousins without me reminding them. Now, they're not perfect at it. And I totally understand that because when I was growing up, that was never something I would have thought of doing. But I've been so inspired by my friends who even when we are out at restaurants will stop. They'll make their sign of the cross. They will pray their prayer before meals. And now I have gotten better about doing that myself. So just being a witness and having people see you do that can go so far. We might not see the impact that it has on them today or maybe in our lifetime, but it does have an impact. We are influenced by everything that we see and everything that we hear. And so much of it is negative in our world world right now. But this is an opportunity for you to really pray before your people and for your people. So really just being a witness is a great way to kind of tap into that interior life in the midst of whatever it is that is going around, um, going on around you. The second way that I want to talk about is if you are staying over somewhere, so perhaps you're traveling to your in-laws, that's what we are doing this Thursday, or maybe you are having family come to you. This is something that has come up in my group coaching calls of that overwhelm sometimes when people aren't great about telling us when they're coming or how long they're staying. I, I know that there are all different types of food allergies and things that people have now, and it can just be a little stressful trying to navigate all of those different avenues. And if you are choleric or melancholic, this can be a little bit stressful because you like to have all of the details planned and you want to be in control. And you might have a phlegmatic um, relative who's very like fly by the seat of their pants. And it's not a big deal to them to not have all of the details to you. So this can be a little bit stressful. So just a reminder to start your day wherever you are with something like a morning offering. That's a really simple prayer. You can offer up your day to the Lord. And again, just kind of recenter it. You don't have to have a a long time by yourself to be able to do that. And of course, I'm always going to encourage your mental prayer time. Do not exclude that just because you are traveling or if someone else is in your home. This is one of the toughest places I have found to be consistent in prayer is on vacation or when traveling or over the holidays. Aside from being sick, I still think being sick is the hardest to be consistent, but traveling is probably next. And it's because you're very out of your routine. Your sleep schedule is not always the same. You might not be sleeping as well if you're sleeping in someone else's home, or you might not be sleeping as well because you're staying up and you're caring for other people who are in your home. So it's okay. I just want to remind you that it is okay to excuse yourself early at nighttime. I know that sometimes there can be that, oh my gosh, well, what am I going to miss out on by staying if I don't stay up and I don't spend time with these people? Um, I'm not saying don't engage, but it's okay to excuse yourself. So for me, that looks like when we're at my in-laws, I know that everyone's going to stay up a little bit later than I typically do. But when I reach my point where I'm tired, I I excuse myself to go to bed before some of the other adults. And that gives me an opportunity, even before my husband comes up to bed, that I have a little bit of quiet time in my bedroom to say my nightly examine, to get myself to bed and have a plan for the morning of how I'm going to approach my mental prayer time. And then I still try to get up early before everyone else. Sometimes there are early risers and I'm not going to be completely alone. So mental prayer might be a little bit tougher, but at least I can have somewhere that's a little more quiet. And if someone sees me sitting there with my Bible, they're probably not going to engage in a ton of conversation. They might say good morning. They might say something, 
but they're not going to sit there and have a 20 minute conversation with me. If they see me sitting there with my Bible and my journal, they're going to know that that's like, okay, you want a little bit of alone time and that's great. And maybe it looks like going and sitting in your car if it's not too cold where you live, like my mom did. That was her thing. And it has been something I have often done as an adult myself. I have sat in the car and I've even caught my husband doing it too, just sitting in his car and recentering before you come in the house. So you're not bringing in all of the baggage of the day, but you're able to just kind of relinquish it there and move forward and be present with the people who you love and care about. Another way that you can incorporate some quiet and some processing time and some prayer time is looking ahead and seeing if it's possible. If you are, if it's actual Thanksgiving, sneak away to mass. I think that's such a cool way to just excuse yourself for a little bit from what's going on and go to mass and start your day with that Thanksgiving and the sacrifice of the mass. Highly, highly encourage that if that is something that you are capable of doing. If there isn't a mass time, you can also look for a perpetual adoration chapel. I know that where I live, there are two adoration chapels. One is closed over Thanksgiving. They kind of shut down on Wednesday, but the other one, it never closes. And so you can go at any point in time, or you could even just sneak into a church and and spend a few minutes. If you tell everyone you're going out at 5 a.m. in the morning or 6 a.m. or whatever it is, or maybe you're the person who offers to go get the forgotten grocery and you can pop into a chapel or a church for a few minutes, it doesn't have to be long. But just recognizing that you are going to be better for the people around you If you have that little bit of quiet time, I think is such valuable knowledge because most of us that have this ideal condition don't always advocate for this ideal condition because we feel guilty about taking that time for ourselves. But really, this is not selfish time. This is better for everyone else because we know that we have to fill that interior life first. The interior life and the active life, they they go together. But we know that one is superior to the other. We know that filling ourselves with God is superior to active works because the active works are going to flow from that interior life. Uh, Another way that you can kind of just incorporate just this isn't so much sneaking away and having the quiet time, but um, I think a really cool way that you can bond with your family or if you're driving on your own uh, is listening to a saint audiobook or spiritual reading or podcast while you are driving. So while you are traveling, I think this is a really great way to incorporate conversation with your family, but also be inspired. I could not tell you, no matter how desolate I am feeling, no matter how awful I am feeling, a book on the saints never fails me. And I usually don't have to read more than a page or two. This week, it was St. Teresa of Avila. I got a book on her life. My spiritual director had recommended a certain chapter to me, and I just opened it up, and I read about two pages, and that was all I needed. I went from wanting to do nothing to, like, completely motivated and inspired and, like, okay, I'm going to push through this feeling really crappy, which I've been feeling really crappy this week, and... I wanted to actually go do something and do something good and something for others and um, just offer up what I was feeling for the people that I love and that I care about. So quick recap of ways that you can incorporate prayer into your holiday travels and into welcoming people in your home. Number one, don't forget to pray for your people. Be a witness, whether it's praying before or after your meals or just offering up silent thanksgiving and gratitude for the people around you. And I'm also going to throw this one in because this is always just helpful advice. When you get frustrated with someone, be curious. When you start to feel judgmental, be curious. And also, quick plug, my good friend Nikki and I are hosting another free workshop on November 29th. And it is on judgment-free holidays, so not judging others and not judging yourself. 
So I really hope you'll join us. I'll post a link in the show notes or check it out on Instagram. If you're on my email list, you'll get a reminder as well. Okay. Uh, We also talked about morning offering. So really simple, but start by offering your day to God. I would also encourage you just checking in throughout your day. Um, A quick five-minute examine is also another great way after that meal time when everyone's feeling a little sleepy they're all kind of sneaking away to watch football or the kids are playing games or whatever it is just kind of sit close your eyes um examines are a little harder to do when it's not quiet but you can find things to be grateful for and you can reflect on how loving and charitable you are being to the people around you mental prayer is the next one so again excuse yourself early if you need to find a quiet place plan for your morning and what that is going to look like. If you can get up before everyone else, even if you get up, you spend 15 minutes in prayer and you go back to bed. I know my in-laws are incredible about letting me sleep in when we are at their house. They will get up with my children. So if I get up and I do my prayer time and then I go back to bed and sleep in late, that works awesome for me. You might not have that. Maybe everyone's coming to your house and you have to get up and you have to do all the cleaning and all of those things. Uh, really work it out with your spouse if that's an option. We just had a birthday party recently. I was feeling very overwhelmed and not been sleeping well. My husband was so awesome. He knew I got up really early with my son and I had started cleaning and cooking. And he told me before the party, you know what? Go shower, go take a nap. I will handle the rest. And whatever doesn't get done, doesn't get done. And it was perfectly fine. It all worked out. And that was exactly what I needed. So don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, Number four was sneak away to mass and number five or a chapel. And number five was just prepare yourself by listening to an audio book, maybe oriented toward the saints or your favorite Catholic podcast or spiritual reading. Um, I know a lot of people really love the Hollow app. So if you have that, that's a good option too. just maybe listening to some uplifting music. Something that's just going to remind you of God's love and infinite mercy as you are going to be around people who maybe are easier to love and maybe aren't so easy to love. And before we close, uh, I have a couple more scripture passages I want to leave you with, but I also just want to share a little bit um, about how important it is to go into these situations with love and kindness. Thanksgiving is not an easy time of year for me. Thanksgiving was the last time that I ever saw my mother. Uh, We had a beautiful day at my sister's house, a small get-together. Our big family Thanksgiving was going to be at my parents' house that following Saturday. So I actually, guess, saw her that Saturday. But I was young and stupid and so stressed from my job that when I got home, I did not want to be thrown into more stress. I needed my quiet time to process my emotions. And my mother needed me to help her with the cooking and the cleaning and all of the stress that comes with hosting a big family get together for many of us. And I was not loving and charitable and compassionate. I did not have a morning prayer practice. I didn't have much of a prayer life at all. Um, Maybe a Hail Mary, Our Father, and Glory Be before bed, but very little throughout the day. I had not filled my heart and mind with God. And so when we went into that Saturday, that ended up leading to some disagreements. I was short-tempered. I'm choleric, so quick to anger. (laughs) And... I just let my temper get the best of me. And in those moments when we have not been spending time with God, when we are very far removed from him, he is there, but we have removed ourselves because of the sin, because we haven't been spending time with him, because we don't recognize his voice, because we haven't made the effort to recognize his voice. It is very easy to listen to the other voices in our head to listen to the noise and listen to culture that tells us that our way is the right way and our feelings matter more than everyone else's. 
So in that moment, in that disagreement with my mother that started over lumpy sugar, of all things, in the kitchen. Uh, and some of you have heard the story, and I'm just going to give a, a sh- short, short version. Um, but we argued. And in my lack of self-awareness, in my disconnect with God, I chose myself. I chose myself in that moment. And I decided I wasn't going to help anymore. I didn't like the way that I was being treated. I didn't like the way that I felt. And so me finding time and space to process typically had been over the years with my mother, she knew was me going to my bedroom. But that wasn't enough for me that day. So instead, I'd left the house and I lived two and a half hours away. And I got in the car and I told my mother I was leaving in some sort of words. But again, in her mind, she thought I was simply going to my room and I was actually getting to my car and I was leaving. And not long after, she passed away very suddenly. And so the last time that I saw her, I didn't say goodbye. I didn't say, I love you. It was more, you know what, mom, I've had enough of this and I don't need this and I'm leaving. And I've been so blessed that I was able to talk to my mom after that instance. I'm so blessed to know how much she loved me and that regardless of how that last time that I saw her went, that she would have forgiven me. But it was very difficult. And the time that I talked to her after that day was very difficult. And I was so ashamed of the way that I left my family. And that has been something I've had to work through over the years. And so I just want to remind you, even though this situation may have never come up for you in your lifetime, because it hadn't for me either, I share it as a reminder that when we are not spending time with God, when we are not filling our hearts and minds with the Lord, it is so easy for the devil to pick apart our weaknesses. It is so easy for him to find an opening if we have not prayed to seal it off. And I didn't even know that that opening was there. But he took full advantage. So embrace your loved ones. Enjoy the beauty of this holiday. And as we prepare for Advent and the coming of Christmas, which is such a beautiful, beautiful season, I just encourage you again to know what your ideal conditions are. To know how important consistency in prayer is. Because just like going to the gym, you can go every day for a year, but if you stop for a few weeks, it gets really easy to stop going at all. And it doesn't take long for all that strength that you build up to go away. And the same thing happens in prayer. And the evil one knows it. So he sneaks in and he takes you away from your mental prayer for one day because you had a lot going on. Because you were out of your normal routine. And then you realize, wow, that felt really good to sleep in. It's no big deal if I miss the next day. Or maybe just spend a little less time. And then it's a little less and a little less. So all of that to say, I love you all. Thank you so much for being here and listening to my story. I pray that you have an incredible holiday with your families. And I also pray for you that if you are not with family at this time, know that you are not forgotten. Reach out to someone else who may not have family at this time. Friendsgiving is such a cool thing. So even if you're not with family, find some incredible friends to hang out with. And if you don't have anyone to hang out with, please message me. And I am going to send you all the Thanksgiving goodness that I can possibly find in my heart to remind you that you are loved and that God loves you. And 
I'm going to leave you with this last little bit. In scripture, time and time again, we see the Lord retreating to pray. And he was always praying, but I've noticed more lately how after a big event, after a miracle, after he's completely emptied himself unto others, he retreats and he prays. And so as you go into your holidays, don't only just prepare yourself for the time around others. But as you finish, as you have emptied yourself out to them, don't forget to retreat and pray and be filled again to be full of gratitude and thanksgiving for all of the wonderful opportunities that God gave you and all the graces. We know family get-togethers don't always go as planned. Sometimes they can be hard. They can be disheartening when our loved ones are not journeying on this direction that we pray that they are journeying. It can be difficult when there is family trauma, when there are conflicts. But give praise for every single person who was able to be there. Give praise for the lives of the ones who are not there, but who are doing so much more for you in heaven than they ever could on earth. And just be so incredibly grateful for every single breath that the Lord gives us on this earth. And ask the Lord to fill you with light and hope for the future. Ask for trust and surrender of all of the things that feel hard and heavy. And again, thanksgiving for everything that feels light and good and hopeful. I pray that you all have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. We'll see you here back next week. We're going to be talking about all things judgment. So make sure to check the link in the show notes so that you can get signed up for the free workshop. That's going to be on November 29th. We'll get the details out. Uh, That's going to be with my friend Nikki. She helped host the last workshop with me. If you miss it, you can always get on the replay list. And if you are not on my email list, make sure you check out uh, at Kylie M. Hine on Instagram so that you don't miss out on a really big Black Friday deal and some other deals that are coming your way. Specifically, Black Friday, I have a huge, huge discount on my 12-week one-to-one coaching program. And there are some giant bonuses for the first three people that sign up. You can start your coaching package right now as we go into Advent, or you can wait until after the new year if that fits better with all the holidays going on. But huge, huge, huge bonus, such an incredible discount that is not going to come back again. So do not miss it. If you're not on my email list and you want to be, you can reach out to me at info at kyliamhine.com and I will send you all of the information. Love you all. God bless. Thank you for being here. Beautiful souls, thank you again for journeying with me. If you have been blessed by this episode, it would mean the world to me if you would leave a review. Be sure to screenshot it, share it on your social media stories, and don't forget to tag me on Instagram or Facebook at Kylie M. Hine. Stay persistent in prayer, protect your peace, and as always, share the light of Christ with everyone around you.